News 10 ABC at 9 a.m. Welcome back, everyone. Today is National Coming Out Day, encouraging the LGBTQ plus community to embrace their pride. Joining me right now to talk more about his own story is Nathaniel Gray with the Pride Center of the Capital Region. Thank you for joining us, Nathaniel. Thank you so much for having me. So I want to ask you first about your coming out story. I know this was when you were younger, but yeah. it's not always this way. No, so it's interesting. Thank you for having us on and or me on and, uh, and thank you for um, acknowledging the day. It's important. Uh, my coming out story is one that's very unique. Um, I, I, my parents are both Marines and I was raised in a very conservative small town in rural Ohio, the, you know, a very uh, footloose kind of town. And it was very clear that I was a different little child and I was treated that way by a lot of people for a long time. And it wasn't until I was 17, <clears throat> excuse me, that I had the opportunity and the, the, the self-awareness and the self-esteem to push back against everything that I was hearing from outside and say, no, this is actually who I am to um, family that didn't understand. We didn't have the cultural movement that we have today. Um, unfortunately, at that time, you know, it was just after the AIDS crisis. So coming out was, was um, something that my parents, that was a, something my parents both referenced in my coming out to me. Um, so it, it, it was a, quite a journey. And that moment uh, is such a relief and so important to have happen. And then it continues, right? It never really stops. When you're talking about how it continues, what do you mean by the coming out moment continuing throughout your life? Yeah, thanks for asking. I think that people um, understandably assume that like idyllic perfect moment of like, you know, mom, I'm gay or I'm trans. I don't, I think I'm attracted to this person. Um, and, and that, you know, you get patted on the head and told I love you and everything's fine. And then you move on and you never have to say it again. But, uh, you know, as a, as a gay man, um, anytime I walk into a room, if I'm wearing a wedding band at any point the rest of my life and someone asks me about it, do I choose as to be honest, the teachers in Florida right now are choosing to hide their wedding band right in order to prevent having an uncomfortable conversation privatizing every part of you um, and that's and, and we come out every day we come out every single day you know if I hold my boyfriend's hand in a mall I'm coming out to everyone around me and I can be honest and tell you that in this area I have been made to feel like um, a predator to be honest when I'm seen holding a boyfriend's hand as opposed to a, a, a community leader who does youth focused mental health work now, I have to tell you something that when we were doing Pride Month coverage, we had you on mm. and I did get a lot of emails about people disappointed or upset that we were even sure. covering Pride Month whatsoever. Is this something that's also reflected in the community, Nathaniel? Yeah, yes. So one of the things that I actually um, speak about in my trainings, I, I, I ask the question, do LGBTQ plus people exist? And I ask people to really wrestle with that in the room because that is a, a problem that there are many people who understandably have their backgrounds, their religion, their culture. I'm not trying to take any of that away from them, um, have their belief systems. Where they intersect with my life or any LGBTQ person's life is when we're made to feel really badly about ourselves because we're being authentic. And that's what coming out ultimately is at the end of the day, is being authentically yourself. What's your closing statement to people who don't understand, really don't know what your world is like? Sure. What's your suggestion for them? My suggestion is you do already know because every, everywhere that I've trained, everyone that I've spoken to, everyone's got a cousin, a family member, uh, a former teacher, a student, someone in their life that is already LGBTQ+. And what I would say to those folks is while they can hold on to their belief systems, other people, LGBTQ plus people especially, we have the, the right, especially in the state, to be authentically ourselves. And um, also there's a, lot of, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of camaraderie and love in our community that we'd love to share with the folks that are around us. And I think just getting to know more folks come to Pride Come to a, a drag event for kids that we did at the museum this year. Come see what it's really like, you know, engage us. Thank you so much for coming, Nathaniel. If you do need help from those programs, Pride Center of the Capital Region is there. They're also announcing their upcoming gala. We're going to be right back with more news.